Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video I'm going to continue the Chigorin series with the move pawn to e3, which is the rarest of the four normal moves against the Chigorin and it shouldn't give white much. But still, if, if Black doesn't know what he's doing, he could end up a pawn down in a difficult position. So it's important to, to, know, to know the theory. If you can hear scratching, my dog is scratching her bed, so... I'm sorry. So let's get into the opening. So d4, d5, c4, knight, c6. So far we've been looking at <coughs> knight f3. If you haven't seen that video, please do. Also, if you haven't seen the introductory video, uh, look at that so that you can understand the, the basics of the opening. So with the move knight c6, black is doing a couple of things. He is putting pressure on d4, which is very important. Uh, he is relinquishing his ability to defend the center with the c pawn, which is very counterintuitive in all d4 openings and could end up being troublesome. So the Chigorin is, because of that, considered a slightly unsound opening and a slightly uncommon opening. But there's a, a lot of things going on, so not being able to defend the center is not going to be that big of a deal if you know what to do. And the third and final thing what the Chigorin prepares is the move e5. So if, if white does nothing then pawn to e5. Also if black manages to take on c4, uh, unlike other d4 openings, white is not going to be able to expand freely with e4 because there's a queen on d4 and there's a knight on d4. So white has to be careful. In the last video we looked at knight f3 which prevents e5 and defends d4. Today we are looking at pawn to e3, which is the fourth most common move, simply defending d4, but not preventing e5. And that's a problem. So in this position, uh, black's only sensible move is e5. He could play e6 or knight f6. I'm not going to get, get into that too much. Those moves are going to lead to positions which are just slightly better for white. So for example, something like this, you actually don't have enough for the fact that your knight is on c6. You would like to have a normal semi-slav with the knight on d7 and the pawn on c6, or you would like to be able to play c5. So, yeah, th this this isn't as active. If you play the Chigorin in this position, you have to play e5, and this is the critical position. Now, uh, white has three options. One of them is the key option that keeps us in the e3 lines, and that's what we are going to be exploring. And that's, of course, the move d takes e5, simply grabbing the pawn. The two moves I would like to mention is c takes d5. And this we are going to cover in the next video. This is going to transpose to the exchange variation, where on move 3, white takes. And you're going to see how. So in this position, after e3, e5, c takes d5, we get the position queen takes d5, knight c3, bishop to b4, bishop to d2 bishop c3, bc3, and we are transposing to the exchange, and that's, as I said, going to be covered. Nevertheless, players with black have to know it, but it's not the topic of this video. And another option is knight to f3, which is a very interesting move, which firstly could tempt this center forward, which would not be smart. If you play e5, then knight d2, and white should be very good here. This center is going to collapse. Also, uh, in, if you play e4, excuse me. Also, this is going to transpose to the English opening most often. And here is how. Uh, black should play ed4 here. That's the best move. ed4. Uh, and now knight f6, knight c3, bishop to e7. This is starting to look normal. cd5, knight d5, and bishop to d3. And after both sides castle, we are now in the king's Engl English four knights. Let me show you how we can reach that position. So c4 e5, uh, excuse me, knight c3, knight f6, knight f3, knight c6, the four knights English, white plays e3, black plays bishop e7, white plays d4, e d4, e d4, d5, c takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop to d3. This has been played a ton of times. Ding Liren plays this, many strong players play this. So, in this position, if knight f3 is played it's most likely that if two good players are playing, we are going to get an English opening. However, <clears throat> the main move is not cd or knight f3, it's d takes e5. And this is the critical way to try and punish what black is doing. And 
black has only one move to compensate for this, and that's d4. Okay, after d4, uh, there are three interesting options for white. Uh, one of them is the main line, the critical line, we are going to be focusing on that, and that's pawn to a3. <clears throat> there are two alternatives which are not as good for white. However, in all cases, white temporarily wins a pawn, and black has to make up for that or win the pawn back. So either black wins the pawn and the position is equal, or black doesn't win the pawn, <coughs> excuse me, and he plays for a ton of activity. So a3 we are to, going to cover last. Uh, so e takes d4. This is a very interesting option, because white has already grabbed one pawn. You can see that black is temporarily two pawns down. Now, this is not a particularly good move. It's not bad, but it should make the position equal. However, if black doesn't know how to regain his pawn, then he could be in trouble. So let's take the first one. This is simple. Queen takes d4, queen takes d4, knight takes d4, threatening knight c2. So bishop to d3 is forced. If you play knight a3, I take it and take your rook. So bishop to d3. Now, increase the activity. Bishop to g4. This simply prevents the knight from developing easily, uh, because if you play knight e2, I can take, force your king to take. Uh, okay, h3, uh, chasing the bishop away, bishop to h5, and now bishop to e3 attacking the knight. And again, black is a pawn down, has to keep the activity going, so castles queen side. Okay, knight to d2, normal move, knight e7, normal move. It's possible to play bishop b4, but I believe knight e7 is better because you're simply threatening knight to c6. So at this point, white needs to give up his bishop pair, so bishop d4. Rook d4, because if black manages knight c6, then he takes with the knight and gets very tricky. Bishop to e2, defending the bishop, it was attacked. Black does not want to trade, so bishop to g6. Bishop f3, very good diagonal. But now bishop f5, and the idea is to simply transfer the bishop here to the best possible square, and then eventually play for knight c6, force white to trade this bishop off or simply wait and play knight to g6 and attack the pawn if you don't want to double your c-pawns. So, knight e2, for example, the rook goes back, bishop to e4. Now, this trade is smart by white, but after this happens, now black either wins the pawn back or white has to play f4. And after f4, there's a trick. And I would say, I mean, this has never been played. Uh, we are about five moves out of theory, but stuff like this, I think you should be at least familiar with. I've spent a long, a long time during the last ten days studying the Chigorin because I was not prepared uh, for for recording this uh, some videos in this series, and this is one of the lines that I've been exploring. And in this position, black can actually take on f4, and after knight takes f4, you have rook to d4. After castle stakes. This should be equal, but if I had to choose, I would choose black, to be honest, because everything is sort of loose, uh, and you can take on c4, he takes here, here you can play g6, and, and this pawn is going to end up being a target, and with pawns on both sides of the board, and with, iso with this isolated uh, king's pawn, I think black should hold a slight edge. So again, after d4, let's just get into the opening. So e3, e5 takes, d4. If white just takes, you, you can trade once, forcing bishop d3, increase the pressure with g4, h3 should really be played, bishop to e3, castle queenside. This is very important. This you, you have to play, so castle's queenside. Knight d2, knight e7, bishop takes, rook takes, and fine, you are a pawn down, but as you can see, you're not going to be a pawn down forever. And your king is better, your pieces are better, you have the two bishops, your rook is on d4, what more could you ask for? So I'm going to say that after d4, white should not be taking this pawn, because if black is prepared, black is going to have a very pleasant position after he regains the pawn, or if he by some chance doesn't, he's still fine. Excuse me. The alternative to this is knight f3, and knight f3, again, not the most active move. Uh, bishop to b4 check, bishop to d2, and now you can simply take on e3. And of course, white will have to take with the pawn, and now you play bishop to g4. And 
again, white is a pawn up, but in this position it's even clearer that this pawn means absolutely nothing, because after, for example, knight c3, you can take on e5. And so let's have a look at that. Knight c3, knight e5, queen a4 check, the knight drops back. Knight e5, for example, you can just drop back to d7. And the material is equal here, but black has a much better pawn structure, and I, I want to be black. So actually, after d4, white really should be playing the main line with a3. So let's have a look at that. So once again, d4, d5, c4, knight c6, e3, e5, d5, d4, a3, the critical line. Uh, there are a couple of ways for black to play. Uh, I'm going to recommend the most active move, which again may seem rather counterintuitive, but black should not be going for his pawn straight away. He should not be aiming to recapture this pawn straight away. So the main move is a5, simply preventing a queenside expansion, and that's a very good move. There are two more moves. There's knight g7, which makes sense. Again, it's going to lead to positions where ed4 should be okay. Again, with queen d, knight d. And there's d takes e3. And d takes e3 is interesting, but I don't think it's in the spirit of the Chigorin, so let's have a look at that. d takes e3. White now really should trade queens. Uh, because otherwise black is going to trade queens. So queen takes, king takes, bishop takes, you grab your pawn back. No one is better here. I mean, black has lost castling rights. Uh, he, he, unlike the Berlin, white still has the bishop pair. So white could play knight f3 here, slightly ruin his pawn structure, but he doesn't have to. Maybe knight c3 is better, and bishop e6 attacking this one. Castle's queen side, king c8. Maybe now you can continue with stuff like knight d5. I mean, this, this should be slightly more pleasant for white. So d takes e3, even though tempting, just getting your pawn back straight away, I don't think is a good move. Knight g7 is more interesting, but after knight f3, bishop g4, bishop e2, and again taking, even though now you can take the queen with your rook, this should still not be too good, because after bishop f3, bishop f3, knight e5, you got your pawn back, but then bishop b7, you can take on c4, but then bishop a7, and white is actually a very dangerous pawn up in this position, and if you take on b2, then you are simply worse, because the A pawn is marching down the board and you are completely unprotected. Uh, also, Rook D1 is really not scary, I think. So there's a trick here which I found. You can play Knight... You can play Knight A5 and after the Bishop retreats you can actually go for a draw, like this. So if you want to bail out, this is interesting. Uh, other than that, I don't think knight g7 is the way to go. Uh, I think you need to play for activity if you play this line. And e3 is, is an attempt by white to make the position very slow and very calm, and you should not allow him to do that. And the move like knight g7 would, would do that for white. So we play a5. Now, of course, white has to know all of these lines. He has to know knight g7 and d takes e3. So I'm going to say that white is going to have more work here. But if e3 is the only thing he does against the Chigorin, then that's not too much time to invest. After a5, we are preventing b4 and sometimes threatening a4. White continues knight f3. And now bishop to c5. Again, it's possible to take, but we don't want to take. We want to develop our pieces rapidly. We want to play bishop c5, now we can see why a5 was useful, and we are now putting pressure. Now, if, if white does nothing, then we do take, and ruin the pawn structure, get our pawn back, play bishop g4, and take the pawn on e5. So e d4 in this position. Bishop takes d4. Uh, bishop to e2 is the main move. It's possible to take, but in, in that case, I believe black is fine, so white should really get his king to safety quickly. So both sides castle here knight c3. And 
this you could say is an important point in the game uh, there was only one high rated game from this position Barev Morozevic and Evgeny Barev won with the white pieces so you, you can have a look at that game uh, the critical move is bishop takes and after pawn takes you now play knight g6 and get your pawn back so it's going to be a position in which after for example queen e7 and rook e1 you're going to have equal material with a better pawn structure but it's going to be hard to develop this guy and if you play something like b6 then c5 is coming and the position could get quite tricky with white's bishop pair so for example knight c5 knight e5 knight e5 bishop d3 here you you don't lose a piece you can play a move like rook d8 but you can see that these two bishops seem very annoying and if i had to choose i would rather be white the engine gives this is almost equal and of course you have a better pawn structure so if if you can trade pieces off get into a major piece end game you will have more targets if you can trade everything off and get into a king and pawn end game you should be winning even a knight versus bishop end game should be winning for black i think depending on where, where the kings are so let's go back a5 is a very useful move preparing bishop c5 again white should not really be taking on d4 we saw lines like that but with with a5 thrown in it should be slightly better than than the other lines so white continues knight f3 and bishop c5 and ed and bishop d again this or excuse me this yeah i don't think should be that that's scary again this is the position we saw already here i could actually play knight to b3 because a3 has been played and this doesn't work so you actually drop a piece so bishop e2 knight g7 castles castles knight c3 and now we take 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 and we play knight g6 we are going to get our pawn back we're going to be we are going to have a knight and bishop versus the bishop pair so that's slightly worse but you have a lot of play so i think considering that e3 is an attempt to calm the position down this is what you get with black that's fine and this is probably the best white can do so to conclude in this position in the chigorin i don't think white should play e3 it's a move black has to know how to defend against but knight f3 knight c3 and the exchange are definitely more active for white and trying to punish the chigorin e3 does not try to punish the chigorin because it allows e5 okay uh next video we are going to continue with the exchange and after that we are going to have a look at the main line with knight c3 thank you for watching let me know what you think and stay tuned for more chess bye bye